Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome to another James Bond review, and that is Diamonds Are Forever. Now this is the one that they did right after Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Like I said in that review, that film, not really a big fan of. I mean, there's certain points that I liked. I liked the ending of that film. I liked the ski sequences and the bobsled sequence. I did not mind Kelly Savalas as the villain. Uh, George Lazenby, certain quiet moments that he had, I liked. Uh, I liked some of the quiet moments that he had, especially at the end. But there's certain moments where he was really trying to push those quips. Uh, he handled himself well in the fight scenes and the action scenes, but then, uh, I don't know, a lot of his performance seemed off. And thinking about it, I wonder if it's because I think he tried to act like Sean Connery. I think that was a mistake. Maybe that's what it was. Then there's those points where he pretended to be someone and they dubbed his voice for another person. And they talk about that on the on Wikipedia and stuff. But uh, George Lazenby, he didn't want to come back because his manager... A number of reasons. His manager said that Bond would be dead by the 70s. No one would care about James Bond. Um, George Lazenby, I don't think he had the best time making the film. Like, he thought maybe he should have had... I don't know, there's a whole couple reasons. The film came out, didn't do that well, so... Didn't do as well as people thought it would. And a lot of people blasted it. But even before the film came out, George Lazenby said he didn't want to come back. And then there's stuff of maybe he wasn't, he wanted to be more of a hippie at that time because he came in and he had like a full beard and the producers were really mad about that. So there was a whole shebang about it. So they had Sean Connery. They got Sean Connery back. And Sean Connery did not want to do it until they gave him an offer he couldn't refuse, which is they paid him a shitload of money. But Sean Connery, I think he actually took that money and he put into a school, I think in Scotland, an acting school, to help develop that. I believe that's what it was. Um, so that's what he used with that money, because he was trying to get that started and that money helped. And then uh, the studio would make two films, two other different films with Sean Connery. I think they ended up making one, and for some reason the second one didn't end up happening. But yeah, you have Sean Connery coming back. You actually have Guy Hamilton coming back in the director's chair. Definitely not as good as Goldfinger. I know this film got a lot of crap because of they said it was much more campy. And overall, I just say I liked the film. I overall liked the film. Um, I do have problems with the flip. But overall, I liked it. At the beginning of the film, you have James Bond kicking some people's ass trying to find Blofeld. And he finds Blofeld. Here played by uh, Charles Gray, who I thought he did a good enough job as Blofeld. Which, although I don't know why he has a full set of hair when the other Blofelds have been bald. But I thought he did alright in the role. And... He gets captured, but then he fucks some people up, throws like these knives or scalpels, throws it into someone, and this, I thought this was kind of silly. I don't know, a lot of James Bond's f stuff is silly, so I'm not going to complain about it too much, but I just didn't think it was much. Basically took Blofeld and like pushed him into this like mud that was superheated, um, and I'm like, okay, you know Blofeld's not dead, especially from that kind of lame death of being dropped in mud, superheated mud, so. Then you get a song, which was a decent song. Diamonds are forever, forever, forever. It's an alright song. I thought it was decent. I forget who sings it. Um, and then, a good chunk of the film is sort of James Bond dealing with this smuggling ring of diamonds. Which really isn't the most interesting plot that you put James Bond in. So that's like one problem. It's not the most interesting plot. But at the same time, I thought it went at a, a decent pace. 
It was nice to see Sean Connery back as James Bond. Some people say that he was sleepwalking and you only live twice. But I would disagree with that. I, I thought he was fine. And I still like Sean Connery in this, but this is the one that I can see if people would say he was sleepwalking through. I could see that a little bit. It seems there's a little bit of disinterest because, again, he didn't really want to come back. He came back pretty much for the money. I just see that a little bit, but at the same time, I still like Sean Connery. I know some people would say, well, if George Lazenby had done this, it would have been better. But I disagree. I think Sean Connery, I still like him. But I mean, I can see a little bit of disinterest that he has. A little bit, I can see a little bit of that. So if people say that, I can, I can see where they're coming from, but I still like them in it. Um, but anyway, like I say, he's getting the smuggling ring where... Uh, People are smuggling diamonds and like holding diamonds for some reason. You like you have these two assassins, which I did not like. These guys it was a Mr. Wint and Mr. Kid. Uh, they're pretty much gay, gay assassins. Two guys, and they always say, "Oh yes, Mr. Wint. Oh yes, Mr. Kid." Like and they kill one guy. Like they put a scorpion on the guy's back, and like they meet this old woman. You find out that she's been killed. And they always try to have a quip. But I thought these two were really bad actors. I thought they really very stiff. Like they're trying to be funny with like their dialogue. But it's very stiff. And it was just strange that the fact that they were gay lovers. Like you could tell because they hold hands with each other. And one guy says, oh, she's very nice. She seems quite attractive for a lady. And I'm like, why did we need this little bit of business? I just didn't think those two actors, that they were very stiff, very bad acting. I didn't really care for them. But the reason I, I liked the film, I thought it went at a decent pace. Plus, I had seen this right after on Her Majesty's Secret Service, and that was two hours and 20 minutes, and there was a lot more chunks, bigger chunks in that film that I felt really bored, like when Bond was pretending to be this guy and going to tell Zavala's lair. Here I thought it went at a more decent pace. And plus, I like Sean Connery better than George Lazenby. I think that helped as well. Uh, I like He meets this girl called Tiffany, which I liked her. I thought she did fine. Uh, Jill St. John. I liked her. Um, I thought she was sexy, but I, I didn't mind her as an actress as well. Um, I just bit that she actually takes his glass and looks for fingerprints and James Bond notices sort of smirks and you find out he actually has this fake fingerprints from Q, which I thought was cool. He, because he's it is a diamond smuggling ring and meets this girl Tiffany. He's pretending to be this guy named Franks. But then the real Franks comes up and you have a pretty good fight scene in the elevator. Fucks up Franks, uh, shoots really decent fight in the elevator, glass smashing everywhere. Throws the guy off, fucks him up with a uh, fire extinguisher as well, like sprays it, shit in his face. Takes his ID, switches it, so that she will believe that that guy's James Bond. I thought that was a pretty good sequence, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, one of the least to know, it gets to a mortuary, and Bond gets knocked down, he's put into a coffin to be cremated. But then the bad guys get pissed because he finds out that he brought fake diamonds and they wonder where the real diamonds are. And he has some decent lines of dialogue, like uh, he meets this girl while gambling. She goes, I'm Pliny, Pliny O'Toole. And Bond's like, named after your father, perhaps. So you have a little bit of racy lines, like uh, he's getting ready to have fun with this girl and these guys come in and he goes, I'm afraid you caught me with more than my hands up. <laughs> it was something like that. I thought, it was kinda, I thought that was pretty funny, actually. But I know that's what some people have problems with, that sort of more of a humorous tone. That, But yeah, it was fun to watch. Um, the Vegas backdrop was decent, because a lot of the film takes place in Vegas. Um, and... Like, they take the girl, plenty of tool, and they throw her out into the swimming pool. And the one the goon says, I didn't even know there was a swimming pool. And Bond gets pissed and actually fucks the guy up with his elbow. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, one at least another, he's dealing with Tiffany. Uh, 
she's going to cheat. He, Well, she's going to run off with the diamonds or she's going to run off with the shit. But then finds out that, you know, this other girl's dead who they thought was Tiffany. So she realized she's got to help James Bond. And James Bond sneaks into his van, goes to this facility, and you're starting to get to know what the plot's about with these diamonds that's being used with this laser. And then again, it gets to another scene that seems very, uh, I guess people would call campy, where it's this facility that for some reason, I guess you find out it's a laser satellite. But also in this facility, there's like a fake uh, a room like, astronauts pretending they're on the moon, and there's like a fucking moon buggy. And James Bond actually, see that bit right there, and James Bond actually gets in this moon buggy, this moon buggy that has like robot arms, and shoots off, and you have a little chase in there. And granted, it's it's goofy, but once again, I had fun with it. It is goofy, though. So if if you don't like goofy, you're probably gonna, not going to hurt it. I mean, you're not going to love the film or anything like that. Then you have a pretty decent chase in Vegas where James Bond and Tiffany are in this red car, which ends with the car getting on two wheels. And you get a big, massive groove because apparently when they filmed it, they filmed it, but when they got... Because basically James Bond's being chased and it's a dead-end alley, but a narrow, and James Bond flips it so that the car's on two legs and can go through this narrow alley. Uh, but when you see the film, it's on two wheels. But then when it comes to the opposite, it's on the other two wheels. It's a big fucking goof. And it's because when they filmed it, they filmed it right. But I think my second unit filmed it, and they fucked up. Because like, you could see people, a crowd of people, and police cars like blocking people for the scene. I'm like, wow, these guys didn't know what they were doing. And then when they did get it right... They fucked up and they put they filmed it with the cars on the wrong wheels. So they answered a shot where it's literally Bond and the girl doing this, and then they do this and the car flips, which is makes no fucking sense. If it's this narrow, somehow it goes, and I'm like, such a multi-million dollar production and it's such a big goof and it's so obvious. It just, yes. Uh, I mean, come on. It's a big James Bond film. What's going on here? Crying out loud. <laughs> but uh, one thing leads to another. Uh, James Bond goes to this top of this place, um, thinking that the culprit is this mysterious guy called Wilde who owns the place. But then he realizes it's Blofeld. And there's actually like two Blofelds. And then there's always a, like a shot, I always remember a James Bond shot where James Bond turns and shoots. And I'm like, oh, it's this shot where he shoots and it's this gun that he has that, uh, like, he shoots and he swings. So that's how he got to the top of this building. And there's, like, two blowfells he's got to pick one. So he shoots and shoots one right in the face. Really cool shot. But he realizes he got the, the wrong, he got a blowfell double. <laughs> uh Basically, he gets captured again. He gets put in this pipeline to die, and he escapes pretty easily. I mean, there's like this device in the pipeline that he fucks up so that people go in to fix it, and James Bond gets out. And then he tries to rescue the real Wild, played by this guy named Jimmy Dean. You know, Jimmy Dean Sausage, Jimmy Dean. Which I like Jimmy Dean. I thought he was fun. I thought he had good personality to him. I thought he was a lot of fun. And like before he meets these, Bond meets these two girls, Bambi and Thumper, who beat the shit out of him. And they go into the water, and Bond sort of gets them settled down. <laughs> but I like but Bambi and Thumper. I didn't mind it. And speaking of Jimmy Dean, like, one moment that I liked was they're attacking them. And, like, they shoot one guy, and Jimmy Dean looks and goes, That's Bert! Tell him he's fired. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And basically, you find out it's a laser satellite, and they got the diamonds to fuck up shit, and... Uh, blow Phil said, okay, give me some money or I'll blow up some more shit. And play, pretty much the ending takes place on an oil rig. And uh, oil rig gets fucked up and then James Bond deals with the two assassins on a cruise and that's the end of the movie. So, as certain campy moments, the two assassins they didn't care for, 
but and it's not like any magnificent action sequences, but it had a quirkiness that I enjoyed. I like seeing Sean Connery back again. Um, I like the Bond girl. I thought the guy who played Blofeld was fine. Had certain quirkiness. It, it was fun to watch. So there were certain moments that I like, really, but it, it was fun to watch. I thought it was a harmless time waster. Last official time Bond was James Bond. Sean Connery was Bond. But I had some fun, but it was a fun time waster. So either way, thanks for watching, and take care.